Welcome to Crimson Guitars and to the Cowrie build, which is hotting up. We are nearly there. Uh, this guitar is being built out of a piece of timber that is uh, 42,000 years old, plus or minus 800 years. It has given me more trouble than anything else I've built in a long time. Kori from New Zealand. It's come out of the swamp. It's you know, fell over a long time ago. And the problem is, in spite of that age, it's actually very soft timber to work with. We have used uh, resin impregnation. I have flooded with super glue and all sorts of stuff, and uh, and yet it is still quite soft and, and pliable. And uh, yeah, anyhow, today, I don't think I'm going to get the strings actually on today, but I am uh, gluing the acoustic style bridge in, uh, in place, and uh, I'm going to be taking apart the uh, the donor Fender Acoustasonic that we're taking the electronics out of, etc. Uh, we're going to be working on the neck. It's all it's all coming together. Bit of fretwork, bit of polishing, bit of uh, well, fun stuff. Where we left off last week was the bridge in place, marked out. Uh, I know where the uh, strings need to be, etc. This is the position that we need to be in, as evidenced by the. Uh, the pencil lines and all of that jazz. What I want though is to scrape away uh, the lacquer internally. I want to leave a, a half a millimeter gap so we can't see the scraped area from the uh, edge of the bridge. How would you do it? Now, once you've made a cut, your scalpel blade does want to follow that cut, which is useful. Uh, as long as you keep the blade uh, relatively angled down. If you go up like that, it'll, uh, it'll want to wander. I'm also not putting very much pressure on at all. We, uh, you genuinely shouldn't uh, have to put a lot of pressure on pretty much any hand tool at any point. If you are, it's not sharp, not set up properly, or not the right tool for the job. Bit nerve wracking. But I have balls of steel, so. All right. We'll say, yeah, modest. There we go. So the plan is to scrape away all of that lacquer. I'm going to actually build up even more masking tape around the area, uh, just in case. And uh, when it comes time to glue this down, uh, I will very slightly bevel just around the outside edge so that that is essentially inlaid into the uh, uh, the varnish on the top of this guitar. It's not shellac beetle based, therefore cannot be called lacquer. Cannot be called lacquer, but I have no self-control and cannot stop saying it. <sighs> Fight me in the comments. Can you say overkill? I said, can you say overkill? And Sophia walks in the room. That's obviously your superhero now. There you are, no. judging our work. We have uh, we have people who uh, who refuse to watch any of the videos unless you're in them. Really? One fan's daughter will only watch videos that you're in. That's a number 11 blade, and I want a 10A. It's got a much steeper angle, and personally, I prefer that. I'm going to put the old blade in the sharp spin, of course. There we go. And with that done, I'm able to. Uh, Follow my line, the blade is more comfortably closer down 
at the lacquer therefore is uh, more accurately following the line that I've already scored in this varnish, in this finish, in this 2K poly, this expertly applied high gloss, really hard, beautiful, professional guitar finish. The purpose, the point here, is to stop any chipping from occurring. And yeah, I probably should have masked the bridge off beforehand, uh, but at that point I did not have the, the design for the bridge. Okay, now, all right, so I'm gonna be using this uh, half inch chisel. This here is a Crimson Guitars fret polishing strop, a little bit of leather, comfortable handle. It is one of my favorite sharpening tools as well. Uh, like seriously, a little bit of chrome polish or polishing compound on there. And uh, this restores and brings back to life your, uh, your tools. Up to and including, I must say, scalpel blades. Which, uh, scalpel blades and razor blades, people forget that, uh, hey, it's a tool. It can be sharpened. Just because it's disposable doesn't mean you should dispose of it. There you go. Not perfect, but uh, yeah, good enough to be a scraper. I am not going to be carving out material. I am going in at a slight angle. And I'm going to scrape away into the corner. I'm tempted actually to build up even more of a, a masking tape wall there. And that gives me something physical to, uh, to actually run the chisel up against. Now, once I break through the initial layer of finish, everything's going to get easy. And you can see the movement in the top that I've got here. I am hoping, I mean, that's, that's actually not too bad, but I'm hoping the glue in the bridge is going to uh, solidify everything. I'm also not going to make you watch this whole process. He says continuing to film. See, I am using a chisel as opposed to a, an actual scraper or a scalpel blade because I've got you know, my greedy little mitts uh, shoved around it. I'm, I'm holding everything and I'm in total control. So I know exactly where this chisel is going. And that makes me happy. so close to the wood there. I'm obviously going slowly and carefully. It must be said that as uh, one gains confidence uh, and speed, the possibility of total utter mess ups, yeah, become somewhat more, more likely.
Yes. That was rather a lot of lacquer to, to, to rip off the front of this guitar. Uh, as I said earlier in this video, this wood is soft. And one of the things that we did in order to solidify everything was actually go fairly heavy with the uh, 2K Poly on one of our normal guitars built out of traditional guitar building timber. Uh, that would not be the case. It would be a, a super thin nitro or something like that. But uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, I have uh, well and truly reached the end of the day, so I'm going to pull this masking tape off tomorrow and yeah, glue the bridge in. Back in the workshop and rearing to go, I'm going to tidy up the uh, beveled edge inside the area that we scraped away, do a little bit of sanding and bevel the edges of the bridge so that we can glue it down with as much of the uh, surface uh, yeah, in contact for a good strong joint so as to not damage the finish or pull grain out of raw, raw wood, for that matter, if you've had to mask stuff off, you pull the masking tape off at a 45 degree angle and flat to itself. And that's putting as little vertical pressure on whatever substrate you've taped to as humanly possible. This is more useful for vintage guitars and uh, delicate finishes, etc. but as a best practice. I think you should uh, I think you should do that. and I should have gone all the way to the line while the original masking tape was on. Yeah, live and learn. This is the first time I've ever had to do this, actually. That was nerve-wracking, it was not fun, but it was successful. Now, what I've got is a, what I've got is a bevel that comes up to within a millimeter of the edge, which means that the edge, I've got a strange shape, I'm going to have to have a, a lip, then a bevel so that it all fits nice and internal and invisible. Rather a lot of work for something that nobody other than you would ever think had to be done. We knew that we were applying a lot of lacquer and uh, it was going to be thick and then pulling uh, the mask off area uh, away from that creates chips and uh, it was something that I wanted to avoid. I'm not sure which I wanted to avoid more. Probably the latter. So we made the right decision here. Uh, anyhow, I now need to create a, uh, an interestingly complex shape on the bottom of this bridge here. And in order to do that, well, I need to make a custom tool. So yay. What I need to do is uh, file into the edge of a, a scraper, let's say this one, uh, the shape. So I've got my bevel and then I've got the flat that I want to create at the correct depth. And then this is going to go into a handle and uh, yeah, be useful. I, ca I can't remember the name of the tool. It's a, it's a scratch stock. There we go. I own a vintage tool shop. We, we've sold, we've sold, we've listed for sale nearly 50,000 tools. And we've got about 6,000 in stock. So we sold over 40,000 tools, and I forgot what a scratch stock was. Permanent marker. The depth I'm going to mark that out. So 
So that's all I need to do is file a tiny, tiny, tiny little edge. And that sets that shape. And I'll be able to scrape it into the edge. Okay, I'm going to use a one of the old fret and files. because that's a safe edge. And there's a bevel. Tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. So I need to put a screw in here to lock it in place. Uh, or I could just use a little clamp, actually, come to think of it. Oh, look at that. This, interestingly enough, is a clamp from a uh, cannula's drips, medical drips. I'm not entirely sure where we got them or how, but hey. So I've got my depth set that way. I don't have a vertical depth set, come to think of it, so I maybe need to make this a little bit more complex. And most scratched socks that we see at uh, the vintage tool shop are made like this of necessity. It's just a thing that somebody needs to, to do relatively rapidly, but, but evenly and you end up with a jury-rigged tool. Jerry-rigged tool? I don't know, what's the phrase? Hold on, so my depth actually is when I hit that. I should be right, is that correct? Okay, I'm gonna run a test on a, uh, on a smaller, smaller piece of wood quickly. Um, this is what I love. I genuinely enjoy just messing around and uh, <laughs> I've never made a scratch stock before they're not it's not difficult it's not a uh, uh, technologically advanced tool but the job that it does it's very difficult to do with other tools so we've got our shape on there obviously could do with a little bit of tidying up with a file or something but it fits over the edge the bevel is nice and tight do with a little bit of tidying up the file, but it goes over the edge a little bit too far. Actually, I need to adjust the depth stop, but it it works. What do you think? Custom scratch stock in about three minutes. Uh, I'll, if I get the burr off that, it'll cut cleaner as well. So tidy it up a little bit. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Slightly change the position, make it a bit deeper. The ends need to be a little bit shorter, but we are very close. And that uh, scratch stock made it so, so much easier. All right, very carefully and with a, with a sharpened end of a tiny scraper. We have other videos on sharpening scrapers in the uh, 
you can check that out in the description. I hope. <laughs> or ask in the comments. I want a nice, flat, clean surface. You can see it, it looks like this finish here. That is because this is impregnated uh, curry. It. It's been impregnated with resin and superglue and all sorts of stuff. I was, I was not expecting this to be quite so much of a palaver. I am here <laughs> way after home time. Uh, this is essentially a day and a half of work. Uh, and a lot of that is due to me just messing around and, and trying different techniques and methods because this isn't something that I've done before. Uh, the scratch stock, very cool tool. This could be used uh, for binding channels, for example. It can be used for, well, they don't use it on spruce, the hard and soft binds. Well, be careful if you do, if you do that. Uh, anyhow, this was not going to be a standalone video, but here we are, it is. Please share this video, copy the link and email it to somebody or just copy the link. I'm very, very, very excited to be getting to the end of this guitar and also to be trying new things. I am feeling confident. Check this thing out. There we go. We're essentially inlaid. It's a 3D kind of a thing. There's obviously a little bit of dust floating around. There's a tiny, 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 tiny gap at the front there, but I've got total, total adhesion all the way along the base of the bridge. <laughs> this is so satisfying. <sighs> I've got a pickup right here. Makes this very easy. Um, so, putting a clamp in there. I don't quite have room because of the thickness of the body to get into the corner, but that won't be an issue because what I'm going to do is take this piece of wood, cut it into a couple of shorter pieces, make a, a section to match the radius of the, uh, uh, of the top of the bridge in two positions, one there and one there, and uh, that will then give me a flat surface to which, uh, onto which I can clamp. In fact, I'll make a, a little prayer gate kind of a thing, I suppose. And uh, if I leave a little bit of a gap here, i.e. it'll touch at the, uh, yeah, it'll be touching at either end and I'll have a millimeter gap in the center. Uh, as I push it down, it's gonna compress out and hold everything in place. So yeah, let's just uh, make that quickly, why don't we? Now obviously there's a uh, there are designs for adjustable ones of these but uh, you know what, I don't need to be bothered with that right now because well we're in custom mode, aren't we?
down and dirty, isn't it? Dry run first. It's late. Just because it's late doesn't mean you get to ignore the basics. Yeah, I should have used super glue on uh, the other piece, but uh, I was worried about it disintegrating onto the bridge, so went with the slightly longer-winded option, shall we say. Yep, that is going to do the job. On with the glue, people. Tiny little bit of squeeze out there, which I'll get in a minute, because there will be a little bit more there and there as well. Front towards energy, that's where the strings are after all. Carefully does it. I am worried about the soft stuff I put on the bottom of the clamps compressing a little bit too far over time so I'm going to stick around and just pay attention to it for a while. It might flatten to a point where I lose uh, the requisite amount of tension. Okay, not very much squeeze out which is great because I don't want huge amounts of glue everywhere. Let's, uh, well, let's clean that up shall we? The temptation is to uh, get a bottle of water and just liberally flood everything and, and use that to basically spread the glue around until it's not there anymore. Uh, I always start with a bit of folded up card or stick or in this case just a little clear piece of acrylic that gets nicely in the corner and uh, physically pulls most of the glue away then with a damp rag or tissue. I clean things up. Obviously I'm being careful not to uh, scratch the finish. My clamping cord just gets in the way in that corner. All right, a little bit of tissue, a little bit of water. I love my job. I really do. If you have got a, uh, a high gloss finish or want a high gloss finish on an instrument that has a bridge like this, you do need to glue the bridge on after the finish. If you're applying a nice thin finish, which is uh, on most guitars advisable, then yeah, mask things off. Uh, I would potentially say uh, mask it off and uh, remove that masking every 
two or three coats so you don't have the full layer of or amount of layers of whatever you're applying uh, on the guitar on the same piece of masking which could cause trouble but um, even if you do masking it off is, is pretty much the way forward this method yeah it took a little bit longer than I uh, really thought it would but also I'm behind a workbench I am in my happy place so thank you for watching thank you for justifying my existence and uh, thank you for joining along as I build this uh, um, very, very cool guitar. I'll catch you on the flip side. Have a good one. Good night.